Listen, y'all. I'm I'm not much of a crier. Not that I think there's anything wrong with it. I actually, I think it's quite good to cry. I think everyone should let it out once in a while, especially men, because a lot of men are not in touch with their emotion side, and they probably should be, but that's completely besides the point. But this game right here, the Night of the Dragon, the Gorn Drogic Farewell game, that was enough to make a grown man cry. Y'all probably watch uh, Brendan Tobin as well if you're fans of this channel. And he has his saying that he does the Goosies, the Goosies galore, sometimes the Triple Gs, the, uh, the Gennetti Galoftin, Goosies galore. And that is what this game was. Absolute chills and, and goosebumps uh, and tears to uh, specifically uh, to end this game here. Uh, where, where if y'all didn't see the game, quick recap, it, it really wasn't much of a basketball game. Certainly a star-studded event, we'll get into that. But it was sort of like a celebration of Goran Dragic with some basketball mixed in. But to end the game with about a three minutes to go, you know, they call timeouts. Uh, and when they come back from the break, uh, there's a new lineup in for Team Goran. And it was Goran Dragic, his brother Zoran Dragic, who Heat fans might remember. But then their dad... And then Goron's nephew and his young son, uh, both those, uh, both the kids were, were pretty young, probably like, you know, less than 10 years old, I'd say. Uh, but that was the final five. That was the closing unit for Team Goron Dragic. And you had literally the Goron Dragic family out there playing basketball together for one last time on the professional stage, at least for Goron Dragic here. And it truly was one of the most beautiful things I ever seen. Because when you talk about Goran Dragic, I mean, y'all know the deal with him. He is truly one of the best people that, that I, I mean, obviously, I've never met the man. But just from things you've heard, he really sounds like one of the best and most upstanding people. You know, from watching him on the basketball court, he's one of the toughest, one of the most passionate, one of the most unselfish guys ever. And even on a night like tonight where all these people, hundreds of thousands of people are watching and you got, you know, tens of thousands in the stadium alone, all watching to celebrate Goran Dragic. And then it ends with him, you know, caring for his family at the end. It was, it was really just a symbolic moment uh, for a guy that you feel so, so great about. Uh, and what a beautiful, beautiful event. Uh, obviously, as a Heat fan, a guy that watched Goran Dragic, you know, play his heart out, put literal blood, sweat, and tears into trying to win this team a championship. Uh, obviously, I'm a guy who is a huge fan of Goran Dragic, and being that, I guess he, he hasn't played for the team in, what, four, four or five years now? Uh, probably closer to, to four, I think, uh, that he's obviously been off the heat, and he's bounced around a little bit, but he really hasn't played meaningful basketball in quite some time. Uh, so it meant a lot. It meant a lot as a Heat fan seeing him back out there. Not to mention he got to share the floor with Chris Bosh, which you talk about goosies. My God, was that was that just a special, special moment? Uh, but we can kind of get into the all the events and stuff that happened today. And then we'll talk about Goran's impact in the NBA and just basketball and in my life in a little bit as well. Uh, because you had this game today. It was basically Team Luka versus Team Gogi. Certainly a star-studded event. We started hearing about all these names that would be involved over the last couple weeks. We heard about Dirk Nowinski, who was there, but he didn't play. Which sucks because I actually do like Dirk, which is weird for a Heat fan to say. But y'all know I like the post game, the post fade. I got that in my bag, too. So I, I do kind of like Dirk, although he didn't play. But you did have Steve Nash play at the ripe age of 50 years old. He gave it a go for a few minutes in the first quarter, which was super dope. You also had Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic. Obviously, was out there balling. We heard rumors Jimmy Butler was supposed to play a couple weeks ago. But apparently, he's in China, I guess, because he was in like a Yao Ming charity tournament the last couple days, whatever. But he wasn't there. But you did have on the uh, on Goran Dragic's side, you had Chris Boss who we heard a couple weeks ago was clear to play, but then I know Ethan Skolnick was actually saying that he's actually not expected to play. But then today, just a few hours before the game, we, we heard rumblings, and then we saw Chris Bosh warming up, and then they did the player intros, and you had Chris Bosh with the jersey on, and he checked in maybe like 15 minutes into the game, somewhere in the second quarter, and it was absolutely a beautiful moment. Got to the free throw line, hit the second one, silky smooth but butter with that left hand stroke, and that the, all the nostalgia immediately took over me. And it was such beautiful seeing Chris Bosch back on the, the basketball court for the first time since what? What are we talking? Like 2016? You're talking almost eight years here. 
since the last time we seen Chris Bosh play basketball, and it was absolutely beautiful. Obviously, Chris Bosh is another guy, one of the nicest guys you ever heard about. It's a damn shame what happened to, or how his career ended. You know, as Heat fans, we didn't know the last time we saw Bosh play that it was the last time seeing him play. We didn't know that. Obviously, with guys like D-Wade and Adonis Haslam, we were able to kind of send them off in a, in a great way and celebrate them, but we didn't get that with Chris Bosh. And there was a lot of, you know, it, his or the way his Heat tenure ended wasn't great either because Bosh wanted to play because he's a competitor, of course. But the Heat, you know, training staff and doctors said he couldn't, did not clear him. So that led to a little bit of turmoil between the two parties. But obviously, Bosh ended up realizing the Heat were trying to do what's best for his life because Bosh did have a very dangerous, you know, disease with the blood clots that he had. It was very dangerous. And unfortunately, that did cut his career short. But uh, what's not unfortunate is his career, you know, Hall of Fame player, first ballot, two time champion and just left an, an ultimate lasting impact on the NBA and Heat fans like myself and really is just looked at as a guy who nobody hates. You know, if you could finish a career where everybody loves you, you're one of the most popular people, you're one of the most successful players of your generation, you know, on and off the basketball court, that is an absolutely perfect career. And you got to feel great for Chris Bosh doing it and seeing him today just have have so much fun. It, it means a lot as a Heat fan. It really does, especially when you consider Goran and Bosh did not even share the court for that long because it was kind of like as soon as the Heat traded for Goran Dragic from Phoenix. It was pretty soon after that where Bosch got hurt. I don't even believe they got a full half a season together. I don't even think they got a month together. I think it was even much less than that. But you can tell that, that it, or it's amazing, I guess I should say, that two guys who didn't really share that much time on the court were able to develop such a relationship that, you know, Gorn wanted to invite Boss to play in, in this game on his night. So that kind of tells you what kind of people they are because they're, they're truly upstanding people. For them to be such close uh, in such a short period of time, uh, and it was great. It was great to see Chris Bosh out there, man. That that was making the waterworks start to come a little bit. I did not cry. I held it in because it was it was a beautiful thing to see. But I love Chris Bosh, man. And you won't find a person who says anything different. Uh, but as a Heat fan, there was a lot of other cool representation. Obviously, you had Goron Bosh, Jay Rich was there. He did not play. He was sitting in the middle of the, the Slovenian bench looking way out of place. It was kind of funny, but he was there to show support. So it was kind of nice to see because Drogic, you know, was part of so many different heat, you know, builds that he's got Bosch. He's got Jay Rich. Obviously, I mean, really, really think about it because we said Goran Drogic was here when, you know, when Bosch was here. It was after LeBron left. And I do think that Heat team could have potentially won a championship, you know, if Bosch had stayed healthy because you did have that one year in 2016 where you had a very good Wade. Drogic was in his prime. Bosch was obviously the leader on this team. You had Luol Deng. You had Hassan Whiteside. You had a very, very deep team that year. I mean, even the Rooks, that's when Josh Richardson was a rookie. So I guess Goran kind of took him under his wing at that era. And that's kind of how those two got close. But you had Justice Winslow, who was an impactful rookie. You had Amari Stoudemire. You had Gerald Green. That was just, that, that was a damn good Heat team. So needless to say, if Bosch was healthy, that team could have did some damage. But anyways, Bosch was here for that kind of era, the post-LeBron era. He was also here the post-Wade and Bosch era. He was here leading teams of James Johnson and Deion Waiters balling. Got his first all-star appearance during that era. And then he even outlasted that era and was here during the Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero band build. Obviously helping lead us to the NBA Finals in 2020. Where I don't want it to be lost. People obviously remember the performance that Jimmy Butler had in that playoffs and in that finals. The multiple triple doubles, guarding LeBron James, leaning over the scores table. But in that playoff run, our leading scorer was Goran Dragic. So although it was an older Goran Dragic, it's not like he was being carried to some, you know, symbolic championship to help end his career. No, the Heat would have never got to that NBA Finals without him. He was averaging damn near 20 points per game, balling. But then it was in that first game versus the Lakers in the Finals where he tore his plantar fascia and ended up missing the next, what, four or five games, only returned for game six because he, he's a warrior. But he played that final game six, which he should not have because he was completely ailing out there. But he played with a torn plantar fascia because that's how tough Goran Dragic was. 
think about everything that he gave up for this Heat team. He he got he lost teeth, multiple teeth. There's a lot of funny times, more than once, where he would get hit in the face, lose a tooth, and they called a foul on Goran Dragic. I, that's crazy. I can't even believe that was something that happened. But he was never, ever afraid to put his body on the line. Playing in the NBA Finals with a torn plantar fascia, diving on the floor, losing teeth. He is one of the most tough players I've ever seen. And if there was any rookie coming into the league now, if they were a guard or even anyone, and I wanted them to model their game, their personality after someone, their heart after someone, it would be Goran Dragic. There's, there's a very short list of names that belong in that kind of toughness, you know, passion category. Guys like Udonis Haslam, guys like Goran Dragic, those are the first ones to come to mind. Because it's just, if you're talking about competitors, Dragic is an, an elite class of competitors. That's why he was able to withstand so many different eras of this heat build. And it's very unfortunate how his heat tenure ended up ending, or ended up, you know, finishing with trading him for Kyle Lowry. Obviously, that was a terrible decision. We, I'm sure that's something Jimmy probably wanted at the time because although he was close with Goran, he was even more close with Kyle Lowry. And needless to say, that didn't really work out. But that's besides the point, too. Because Dugoran Dragic was here for a very long time, very clearly left his impact on this team. And I cannot wait until the day where he gets his jersey retired by the Miami Heat. And I do expect that to be this upcoming season. I don't see why they'd wait any longer, truthfully. Uh, I know Ethan Skolnick and Greg on five on the floor. They're they're in the process of ranking the top 40 uh, Heat players of all time. I think they had Dragic come in at like eight or nine. Uh, so very clearly a top 10 Heat player of all time. So I don't want to under eight, understate his impact on this Heat team. But moving along with today's farewell game, uh, other Heat guys you had was Benno Udrit. The, the guy was here for a very short amount of time, but he was good here. I don't know if y'all remember Benno Udrit. He came from Memphis and like the Mario Chalmers trade to Memphis. I think something like that. Birdman was also in that trade somewhere. And Benno was here for like a half a season, but he was pretty good. So it was nice to see him back. Obviously, Zoran Dragic had a little stint with the Heat. He like played all 48 minutes one game to end the season versus Philly. That's the game where like Michael Beasley dropped like 40 because he played 48 minutes. Something crazy. So uh, Zogi, does people call him Zogi? I don't know. But Zoran does have a little bit of heat memories there as well. You had Chris Quinn as one of the coaches. And then surprisingly, you had Jason Jackson as an announcer on the for the game, which was very funny. I did not expect that. I actually tweeted at him on Twitter and said, yo, is that the Jack show? And he responded with him uh, with a gif of him dapping up Tyler Johnson. So shout out to my boy, Jason Jackson there. But uh, super fun game. Uh, some of the other fun stuff we've seen was uh, at halftime they had, which was one of the longest. It must have been a 40 minute halftime, which I get because there was a lot of old heads playing today and they were winded. And that includes Gogi. Gogi was super tired. He's on the bench huffing and puffing, face all red you know chugging water i was about to do the motion but that'd be kind of sus to do on camera but those old heads were tired so they had like a 40 minute half time but then they did have zoran and goron play one-on-one -on -one. uh they had a random soccer match towards the end where they just stopped playing basketball brought a couple of nets on started playing soccer goron sc scored a goal in that too so just overall a super fun day celebrating the legacy of Goran Dragic and it's really cool to see how much he means to those people of Slovenia I mean keep in mind didn't they uh, Slovenia they won the World Cup in like what was it 2018 I know there was a very young Luka on that team which by the way I remember and you know I'll pat myself on the back here I knew Luka was going to be a star before anyone because I was watching those Slovenia games back in 2018 because I wanted to watch Goran Dragic play and I seen this kid, Luca, and I was like, who the hell is this 16-year-old busting the other team's ass? Now, here we are, what, six years later, and Luca's, you know, MVP front runner, but I seen it coming. But all that being said, Goran was the best player on that team. He won MVP of that tournament, in which Slovenia won the gold. Like, we're not talking about a huge country like China, the United States, Russia, Slovenia. For a country of that size, to win a championship of that magnitude, Goran Dragic has cemented himself as a legend in that country forever. Like, y'all remember that game a few years back when Dallas played at Miami and like it was Slovenia day? You had 
thousands and thousands of Slovenians fly over and come to Miami for that game. And they stayed for hours after they were showing it on, you know, Fox Sports Sun or whatever the hell it was called back then. And it was all the Slovenians and they were chanting like, I don't remember, but it was very catchy. And I just remember that moment because I was like, wow, like Goran is truly a, you know, an international star. We obviously have love for him in Miami, but there's a whole country who just uh, shares that same passion as us. And it's just a beautiful thing. So this was awesome to have a very, very nice uh, jolt of basketball during this long off season. If you guys missed it, I'm sure the highlights will be on Twitter or YouTube somewhere. You had like Nikola Jokic do a off the backboard fast break dunk, which I'm sure you could find. Boban Marjanovic was there shooting like 30 foot bombs. That was crazy. Uh, but overall, just a super, super fun night. Uh, and it gave me the feel goods, man. It really did. But anyways, we got a lot of other stuff going on. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure to like the video and subscribe because I'll be coming to y'all with content all off season whenever we got stuff to talk about. I am hyped. Uh, UM versus Gators. That's next week. FSU lost today. So you know we're happy about that. And then we then we do got a Dolphin Steve season starting in just a couple weeks. So got a lot of stuff coming up. Nice to get some basketball going as of right this second though. And I'll see you on the next video. So peace out everyone. Look, pull up in your city, trying to get that dead fast sight. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill them off, yeah, I need a head space. You know this homegrown bitch, don't a fan, mate. Hmm.